naive to think, think justice will come if we do not implement the structure for it. I'm more, more afraid, afraid of, of concepts concept that, that will exist like, like jungle justice, justice when, when people, people are mobbed to death without the benefit of the doubt. How do we know who is innocent, innocent or guilty? guilty? I'm afraid of events that leaves me powerless when I think. Then I'm ashamed of being a human being. I'm especially afraid of war. For what it means for the poor, how it margins the parties involved, intentionally targets the innocent, and spreading pain to every door. It eats up the humanity in our core. I see all this because of Yagana's story. Yagana was a rural girl of 12. She beamed that carefree beauty of a child, inquisitive eyes, sympathetic voice, brilliant smiles, you know, that innocence of a child that is full of dreams. Yagena was an only daughter to her parents, a village favorite, always first in class or Islamia. One look at Yagena and you'd see a future star. If you were to visit Kauri, you'd find her always helping the old or running errands for the physically challenged. She's the type toddlers who swam around to learn canary songs and stories under the moonlight, happy and shielded from the massacre going on in Meduguri feeling safe from the prayers the villages have offered for protection. Until one ugly evening, Kauri faced its greatest tragedy, its first glance of man's inhumanity. Anti-aircraft rounds rented the air with every brutality Boko Haram savages ambushed Kauri. Within minutes destroyed the very foundations of Yagana's world. With RPGs clashed the cops, IEDs, anti-aircraft guns, they raided and sat burned the village, bringing chaos, slitting throats, and putting bullets in skulls. Waving black-blooded flags while chanting Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. As persons they shot also called on Allah's deliverance till they bled out. How did we get here? A bank into Yagana's home and her whole world was gone. Both parents killed in cold blood. Her mother shot for that natural instinct to protect her child, refusing to hand her over to the gun-wielding attackers. Her father, for just being male, got two red bullets into his skull. At gunpoint, Yagana with other girls were dragged into a truck, half of a village dead, with hands still warm from her parents' blood. She couldn't absorb the horror. This beautiful child was forced to see her walls of love for the world crash down. She didn't even get the chance to comprehend she was to mourn. Mourn her parents, relatives and friends or take the enormity of it all. Soon she found out she has just been sold as a slave instantly getting owned by the man who pulled the trigger on her parents and friends effectively imprisoning her into a mental cave. That night, that child cried. Several of those terrorists raped her again and again and again. For India brainwashed horror frenzy. In Yagana, they saw a beauty of war. But in reality, she is just an innocent girl of 12. That night, her spirit was broken, her future violently taken, her worth and happiness sapped. She called and prayed for the usual help of her parents, even though they were dead. She remembered the armed policemen in Kauri, wishing if only they could come and shoot this animal dead. She even called on God, the same God Boko Haram will glorify, but got silence instead. Then she began to think, maybe these savages worshipped the true God instead. And it is his will that Kauri bled, that the Khalifa had God's approval to choose who would be dead. Remember, Yagena is just 12, and she had no concrete ideology in her head. The world just did not make any sense. Week passed by, and there was no help in sight. She got deeper and deeper into the void. From being raped day by day to gathering firewood, cooking food, her tormentors ensured that her status as a slave held good. 
Yagana could not even understand that it was because she was pregnant that her body was changing. She literally had to be told. She was a child and this world was starting to prove too cold. She just wished a flash or a bang would force this world to fold. A breaking point bringing her societal state out bold. And when it seemed that the burden was too much from the emotional and physical pains, it was apparent to her tormentors she was almost not an asset anymore. So they tricked her to believe it was time to become bold by embracing their ideology. Six months pregnant and dressed with a vest of bomb, they gave her a choice to make heaven and it made a lot of sense to her because her escape from this horror had to come through this hole. If she could just end it all with this bomb, her revenge on a society that has left her to keep sinking in that shithole, She's now being given a chance to leave. At least that was what all the while her tormentors had hoped to achieve. A strategy that has served them well for cloaking their cowardice. It was to them a real reprieve. But Jagana was not in other ideas. She was considering from the warmth in her tears. In the moment they gave her a clear to attack an IDP camp with a checkpoint nearby, one look at the kids and buried memories of Kauri made it clear she just wouldn't dare. Choosing instead to make a run for it towards the checkpoint so the soldiers would disarm it. She could shun the threat of stigma for the hope to survive it and be in Kauri again. So she could have another chance to play as a kid again. Tell stories while they see the grains starting to remember what happiness felt like again. Yagana made for the soldiers on shore. The seconds left before detonation. Hands raised in surrender, the soldiers took straight notice, shouting that she stop her progression. Stop! Stop! And in this heightened tension, boom! A second suicide bomber, already in the midst of those innocent kids. Then a rapid gunfire. Yagana and the baby in her womb lay dead. The thing that this tragedy is over is to have lied. The Bruno State government have estimated that thousands of Yaganas exist. And unlike the ugly episode in Chibok that gained limelight, it's the plenty anonymous Yaganas that we need to also think about. We must find a way out for them. If we cannot as individuals make any effort to rescue them as some security and humanitarian organizations are doing, as a community, we should welcome them. We should be understanding, empathizing, accommodating to them. This is just but a little offering after the way this society, our society, has let these children down. Those that make it back, those survivors, they should be the one to stigmatize us not the other way around. In fact, I'll understand if they do. So I'd urge us to say no to stigma. Stand up and make another person say no to stigma and make that person mean it too. Thank you.